Hey everyone! Today I'm doing half a drawing challenge and half a character introduction. I'm drawing my Warriors of Seas in different stages of their life to get a feel of how their design would change as they age. So let's get right into it with Starling Paw. Leaf Clan is a bit different from other clans. They migrate around their ancestral lands, but they often explore new areas as well. Starling Paw's personality fits this lifestyle perfectly, as she is bold and adventurous. Her mentor, however, is the exact opposite. Glamthroat is shy and nervous, and he prefers to stay around camp instead of explore. The two don't get along too well, and Starling Paul often finds herself doing her own thing instead of listening to her mentor. Starling Paul's closest friend in the clan is her sister, Cormorant Paul. Starling Paul would do anything to keep her sister safe. Cormorant Paul has been hurt enough already. When their mom, Jackdaw Flight, died, their dad, Willow Briar, fell into a depression. He started to neglect his kids, which was devastating for Cormorant Paul. Starling Paul did her best to cheer her sister up and get their dad back, but nothing seemed to work on Willow Briar. Then Willow Briar returned one night with another kid, and he pretended that everything was alright, as if that one kid fixed his happiness but no one else could. Cormorant Paul was just excited to have her dad back, but Starling Paul hasn't forgiven him. The only other cats that Starling Paul has a close relationship with are her uncle Ravenheart and her cousin Gastrokid. Ravenheart is a second father figure to her, and Gastrokid is like a little sister. Together with Cormorant Paul, the three young she cats got into plenty of trouble. When it comes to her design, I wanted her to be a small, stocky she-cat. She got most of her body shapes from her mom, but her fur shapes are more reminiscent of those of her uncle on her dad's side. I wanted her to have rounded shapes that could be pointified if necessary. Because she is named after a starling bird, I gave her thin stripes to match the bird's patterning a bit. So as you may hear in the name, Starling Paul is not a warrior yet. In the story, she actually starts off in this stage of her life, as a young apprentice. But since she will gradually grow up during the story, I wanted to have older versions of her design as well. So these designs may change in the future. And I haven't decided on a warrior name yet either. I may ask for some help from you guys to name these kids as more of their story and personality is revealed. Next up is Cormorant Paul, the sister of Starling Paul. Cormorant Paul is actually the oldest of the two, if only by a few minutes. Cormorant Paul inherited the tall genes from her father, Willowbriar, so most of her body structure consists of longer shapes. She has tall legs, a long neck, and a long, thin tail. These features become more and more apparent as she ages. Cormorant Paul is a kind and outspoken she cat. She can easily make connections with other cats, both in and outside of the clan. She is also desperately trying to keep her family together. Her sister and uncle have strange relationships with her father and brother. And Cormorant Paul is stuck between all of them. But Cormorant Paul is sure that if she tries hard enough, she can make them see the good parts of each other, and they can become a big happy family again. Cormorant Paul's mentor is Garlicfoot. Garlicfoot is a brave and strong fighter, one of Leaf Clan's best warriors, which would make her a great mentor. But she is also stern and so distant from her apprentice. Of all the cats Cormorant Paul has met, Garlicfoot is the only one who doesn't seem to like her. And no matter how many questions she asks, or jokes she makes, Garlicfoot replies with short and formal answers, if she replies at all. Cormorant Paul was also born with a magical ability that was passed down to her from her mom's side. While she and the other Leaf Clan cats are not exactly aware that she has this ability, her peers Starling Paul and Ren Paul have noticed that Cormorant Paul always seems to know what is true and what is a lie. Aside from magic, Cormorant Paul also inherited her mother's crooked nose, made to look like a bird, and some of her fur shapes. Her diamond-shaped face is from her dad's side, but together with her cheek fur and her offset ears, it gives her head more of a heart shape. Her markings are also based a bit of those of a cormorant bird, so she has a white throat, for example. So the ages on which the kit and apprentice versions are based are three and five and a half moons old, respectively. Yes, you heard that correctly. Five and a half moons old is apprentice age. Unlike other clans, Leaf Clan kids are made apprentices at four moons old. Traveling around can be tough and dangerous, so the kids learn survival skills from a young age and help taking care of the clan. After three moons of apprenticeship, there is a first assessment. If they pass, they move on to the next stage of their training and are allowed to perform harder and more dangerous tasks.
Then there's Renpaul, the adopted brother of Starling Paul and Cormorant Paul. Renpaul is a moon younger than them, so his kid and apprentice drawings here are also a moon younger than those of his adopted sisters. When Renpaul was two moons old, he was abandoned by his mother and found by Willowbriar. He doesn't remember much from before he joined Leaf Clan. Renpaul is a timid and observant Tom. Most of the cats of Leaf Clan are supportive and kind to Renpaul, but he knows some of the warriors disapprove of his outsider blood, so he tries to avoid those cats. However, his mentor Ravenheart is one of them. Ravenheart is starting Paul's and Cormorant Paul's uncle, and has been against Renpaul joining the clan from the very beginning. While he hasn't expressed the letter out loud exactly, Renpaul has noticed how his mentor looks at him. And, in the half moon that he has been apprenticed, Ravenheart has refused to train him. Instead, another cast stepped up to the task. Shadowfur, a senior warrior who has been an outsider herself once, has been the one taking Renpaul out for training and on patrols. Renpaul absolutely adores her and wonders why she wasn't appointed his mentor to begin with. Maybe one day he can gather the courage to ask his leader if he could switch mentors. Aside from Shadowfur, Renpaul has a close bond with his dad, Willowbriar. Cormorant's Paul is always nice to him too, but starting Paul tends to ignore Renpaul. Renpaul likes hanging around with the others too, but so does Castro Kid. Castro Kid is Ravenheart's only daughter, so Renpaul avoids her as much as he can. So Renpaul came from outside of the clan, and on top of that, he is the only cat in the Leaf Clan to have a brown pelt. So I wanted to incorporate his different origins into his shapes as well. He's a big fluffy tom with two layers of fur. His darker fur sits on top and is somewhat shorter and has thicker, round tufts. His lighter fur is long with thin, pointy shapes. His design is based a bit off Maine Coon cats. And like Maine Coons, Brentball's double layered fur is good for swimming. The combination of his ears and fur make his head a bit of a star shape. His fluffy shapes help make him look more soft and insecure, but they later on also add to his big size, making him more intimidating. And you may have noticed the accessories that each of these apprentices have in their teen and adult stages. These accessories have something to do with a certain twist to the story. Let's just say that they provide a way for the apprentices to access a hidden power that each of them have. Next up is Kestrel Kid. At the beginning of the story, she is still a kid at 3 moons old. But she will soon become an apprentice like her peers. Kestrel Kid is the only daughter of Ravenheart and Sandclaw, two strong and respected warriors. As an only kid, she's used to getting a lot of attention, but sometimes she finds herself envying her older cousins, who always have each other. After Starting Paul and Cormorant Paul became apprentices, things have become incredibly boring in the nursery. Renpaul, then still Ren Kids, was always avoiding her, and this only got worse when he became an apprentice too. And when Kestrel Kid is bored, and no one wants to play, she finds other methods to entertain herself. She starts causing some mischief. Kestrel Kid is the troublemaker of the clan. She likes playing pranks on the other clan cats. And one of her favorite targets is the medic Sage Nose. A Sage Nose usually fails to notice at first that he has been pranked, which Kestrel Kid thinks is hilarious. Besides, Sage Nose is always so stern and serious, often getting Kestrel Kid punished for her jokes, so she pranks him even more as revenge. Let's just say the two mutually dislike each other. Whenever Kestrel Kid is not playing practical jokes on her clanmates, there is a high possibility that she has snuck out of camp. One of the few things that can fully capture her attention are the lights in the sky. On certain nights, Leaf Clan's ancestors dance in the sky, calling their living kin to dance with them. Lately, Leaf Clan hasn't been answering the calls, but Castro Kid has. Inspired by the stories that she heard from the elders, she reaches for the sky, though she has had no luck reaching them yet. The two elders are some of her favorite cats in the clan, and they are also her grandparents. Her punishments often involve her having to take care of them. But the two older cats secretly help her out and always tell a story afterwards. Design-wise, Kestrel Kid got a lot of her body shapes from her dad, Ravenheart. But her fur shapes and belt color are from her mom, Sandclaw. 
In her markings, I also reference the bird she is named after, the kestrel. I know these markings are typically more for male kestrels, but I don't think the most cats would care enough to know the difference. Starling, Cormorants, Wren, Kestrel. We've had a lot of bird names up to now. Well, that is because it is a family tradition from their common side of the family. Jackdaw Flight and Ravenhearts were named after birds as well. However, I do want to clarify that this family doesn't own bird prefixes. Other cats can name their kids after birds as well. For example, there's also Gatwall Stream in the clan, which is an unrelated cat. I really like birds, and it started more as a coincidence that they were all bird named, and then I just ran with it. Finally, there is Tusk, who is not a Leaf Clan cat, but a loner. Many of the details about Tusk's background are still under revision, and I have yet to figure out their personality. So there is not a lot I can tell you about them right now. But maybe that will just add to the mystery of the character. Dusk grew up in a clan far to the south. This clan's ancestors were part of Sun Clan. Dusk was blamed for an accident, so they fled home. Living alone and wild is hard. Luckily, they do have someone to mentor them. Ashen, an independent she cat, has made sure to visit Dusk each night. Ashen is fun, but Dusk still can't help but feel a bit lonely. So, Dusk grew up in the south, where there is a warmer climate. So their pelt is not as thick as those of leaf clan cats. But they still get by in the cold due to their strange ability to make small fires. They hide this ability though, from everyone but Ashen, since fire is never a good omen. Design-wise, Tusk is a short-furred cat, so their fur overall does not add that much shape to their body. The only exception is the top of their head, where the fur is extra long. Where the fur is extra long. At a young age, their fur is rough and pointy, but it becomes more smooth and soft as they grow older. And that's it, they're done. This took way longer than expected, though that may have partially been because of a PMV that I've been doing a little bit of work on. I'm also planning on doing introductions for all of the other Leaf Clan characters, so look forward to that in the future.